Sunday had started off grey and miserable, but the sun soon showed its face and I decided to head out and I headed north up the A9 to a place that I'd driven past many times, but I'm ashamed to say I'd never actually stopped here and spent time exploring the area. I'm in Highland, Perthshire this afternoon and it's absolutely lovely. There had been rain this morning and the forecast was good for this afternoon and that's the sun just come out. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm hoping it stays like this. You can see behind me that's with Ben Aglow just still shrouded in the cloud. I don't know if you can make it out but the top car and layer from Ben Aglow is over there. And if I swing around this way, you see down the glen and the A9 winding its way north. There's some beautiful colours over there in the in the forestry and that's one of the reasons I came up today was I drive past this sweeping loop of road uh, it's a bit where you come up the A9 and uh, if you're heading north you can see Benigo for the first time but on the left hand side there's this lovely forest and at the moment it's just <laughs> the colours are absolutely amazing so later on I'm going to go down there and explore that I hope if I've got time but before that I'm actually headed up a mountain that if you follow my blogs you'll have seen possibly six seven blogs in this mountain but I've never actually been up from this side. It's Ben Varaki, and instead of parking round at Mullen, I've parked down at Killy Cranky. And I'm ashamed to say this is the first time I've been up this way, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think I'll avoid most of the crowds, and the views already, as you can probably see behind me, are magnificent. So hopefully I'll get some nice shots later on on the way down. But anyway, I'm going to crack on up here and see where this path takes me. It's quite well signposted actually, it's, it's as well signposted as the, the normal route or <laughs> the route from Mulan. Uh, so it's quite uh, quite nice, hopefully I don't get lost. And there's a few peaks that I've not been up to the to the back of Ben Varaki that I'm hoping to visit today. So let's get uh, let's get cracked on in this lovely autumnal weather. <laughs> The lower parts of the walk were through some lovely grassy fields and there was a grand uh, Land Rover track, very grassy, to follow up and a few stiles and dikes to cross on the way onto the open moorland. Well, I'm getting a bit higher up the hill now and if I spin round you can actually see the top of Ben Varaki. I don't know if you can make it out on the camera but that peak with the cloud above it is the top and it's lovely coming up coming up a familiar hill in an unfamiliar way it feels like a whole new outing and it is I suppose this is just fabulous it's um it's quite a nice path up here it's very grassy it's like a grassy uh, Land Rover track as you can see there so it's quite easy on the knees and the uh, the feet and the joints and what have you as opposed to the normal track which is a bit more of a uh, constructed uh, well-purposed path but this is just lovely and the views behind me here I mean you can still hear the noise from the A9 but the view over to those forests I don't know if you can make it out just all golden browns and reds the trees are just absolutely beautiful so I've taken a few snaps here it's not ideal light it's probably about two o'clock in the afternoon but just absolutely lovely, beautiful place Perthshire. Absolutely gorgeous, especially in the autumn when the colours are like this. Let's go on and start heading up the hill. I think this track starts to peter out and I'll, uh, I'll do an update to see what the track goes to, whether it's pathless or what, but uh, so far, so good. <laughs> Well, I've come off the main path. When I say the main path, there's a path that runs between Mullen and Killy Cranky, and uh, I might come back down that way. That leads on to the main sort of pathway up Ben Varaki from Mullen, but I've come off it and I'm hoping to go up this 
subsidiary top over there and then work my way along the ridge and then up to the summit of Ben Varaki there and you can see there's loads of people well you might not be able to see them because I can just make them out but I expect the summit to be busy but I've really only met two other people uh, on the way up this way and it's just it's nice and quiet it's, just a, it's a nice way up actually, really nice this path isn't quite as nice, it's a bit more rough and ready a bit more heather and I'm pretty sure heading up the Bulak and up here it's going to be pretty pathless but so far so good, some of the the better known peaks of higher Perthshire are coming out over my shoulder is uh, Shahalian, the fairy mountain and Farragon Hill over there I always think I should be in a token <laughs> token movie when I say these uh, names of hills, absolutely magical but anyway, I'm going to get cracked on the steep bit's coming up now so I need to get my head down get some juice inside me and uh, get to the top <laughs> After a fair bit of heather bashing I was soon finding my way towards the top of the first peak which was called Mulan Dam and I was glad to get to the top but the heather was shorter and not to, up to my knees <laughs> Well that's me on the top of the small rising Mulan something sorry I've not looked at the, the name I'll pop it on the screen here the name of this wee peak but there's no uh, no trig, no summit cairn it's just lovely and the views are spectacular. You can see Ben Aglow now, that just appeared. It's one of those one of those hills that just appears when you come up onto the summit of this one. Looks great. And round the north to Dramuktar. And you can actually see, you'll not see it in the camera, but you can actually make out Ben Nevis, Glencoe, past Shahalian, down to Ben, ben Vorlich, and away down past the Ocals and East and West Lomond. I'm going to stop now, get a drink, have a bite to eat. And then I'm going to head to the summit, which is just, just there, before taking my time and heading back to the car. But what a place. And I should also mention, I wasn't expecting to see anybody, it was really, there was no path. There was a kind of animal track coming and going, and when I came off the Land Rover track, I didn't think I'd meet anybody. But I met a couple coming down, and I recognised them. They are regular contributors to the, the Walk Highlands Forum, I think their username, uh, I can't remember, I, I think Weaselmaster and um, I'll pop the names up here anyway, it was lovely to meet you guys hope you had a safe drive home but uh, yeah, I'm going to get up here back down so I can get home safely now Woo! After coming off the summit of Milan Dam, I headed a short distance along the path and found a nice wee rock and decided to stop here, have some lunch, take some photographs and really just enjoy the views which were far reaching. You really could see from one side of Scotland to the other today. What a lovely place to enjoy my lunch, the views were superb, but it was soon time to get cracked on, I needed to get to the summit and back to the car, so I saddled on my backpack and headed onwards to Ben Barak.
been out. And you can see the summit of Benvraki isn't too far away now. It's been lovely. Can't really uh, recommend that enough trying to go up a whole different way, even if you've been up it hundreds of times before. It just, just adds new life into the walk and excitement. Really can't, uh, can't get over it how different this path is and different the aspect of the hill. The whole experience, it might as well be on a different hill. Uh, so I'm really glad I came today. And the views are just... <laughs> that behind me is the Beneglow mountain range, just there. So you get a better view from it on this side of the hill than you usually do from the summit because you're just a wee bit closer to it. And over here, you can see the sun starting to lower over my shoulder. And uh, you can see Ben Vorlich and yeah, just the usual hills, Shahalian and so on and so forth. So yeah, I'm going to crack on and get to the summit and then I'm going to come back down this way and then cut across field or cut across country down to the path and then back to the car. And hopefully if I get down in enough time, I might go and explore the soldier's leap uh, down at Killycranky. What a beautiful afternoon though. <laughs> Let's go. So there's the summit. It's a bit like, uh, a bit like Arthur's seat today. And I don't blame them. A fabulous afternoon to come out and be in the hillsides. My way to look forward to meeting these people and saying hello and maybe have a wee bite to eat on the top before heading back down the quiet way. <laughs> just off the summit. So it was just over there in the blue and there was lots of people so I didn't do any filming to a camera. I didn't want to sound uh, <laughs> people wondering why I was speaking to a camera. So I've just come off the summit and I'm heading down more directly this time. I'm not going back over the ridge, heading straight down there towards the path which takes you around the back of the walk-in. Uh, I'll not be going past the walk-in but hopefully pick up the path beyond that and then down into Killycranky and maybe see if I've got enough time to go and have a look at the soldier's leap. It was pretty pathless again coming down off the summit and I spotted another loch in which I headed past and it gave some lovely reflections. It was uh, it was really cracking. But the views when I got to the other side of that loch in were equally as good. It was superb. It was absolutely glorious coming down this side of the hill. I, I, you'll probably not see it because it'll be blown out, but the hillsides down here, the, the forests are all this lovely autumnal colour. And with the sun going behind the clouds, there's shafts of sunlight coming through, and you see parts of the forest illuminated. After taking some photographs across the Perthshire Hills, I soon found myself back down in the forest and I still had time before the light faded to go and explore Killy Cranky and head down to the Soldier's Leap. I come back to the car and I'm down at the heading down towards the where the Soldier's Leap is and this is where the Battle of Killy Cranky happened. I think it was in the 17th century. It was one of the first battles of the first Jacobite uh, uprising with I think it was Sunday clan or Chief Dundee um, who fronted the battle and the Jacobites won but I think he died during the battle. Anyway, it's absolutely fabulous. What a time of year to come here. Look at the colours. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm actually going to head down. I'll probably not go too far. I'll probably get down to the river because I'm pretty tired after that walk. But I'm going to head down and see if I can get some pictures. Lovely colours. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Well, that was that. I went down and saw the spot where the soldier leapt. Apparently, it was one of the redcoats being chased by the Jacobites following the battle and uh, made the 15 foot jump across the the rapids to safety as he was being chased down and hunted by the Jacobites who had won the battle. So, interesting place. What's the history and the leaves and trees? So, you know, a worthwhile weed detour. I'm heading back to the car now, starting to get a little bit dark. 
and uh, yeah, here at home.